Yeah. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna try to make an auto top off. Honestly, my tanks, they all have been really reliable, really chill. I don't wanna jinx anything, but everything has been pretty consistent. All of the fish are pretty chill. Um, oh yeah, Wolf is healing, I'll show you guys later. And uh, yeah, yeah, everything's, everything's pretty good. Which is the reason why I haven't been posting too much is it's just because there hasn't really been much to post about. I've just been enjoying my fish. But in today's video, we're gonna kinda add to the fish system. We're gonna build this auto top off because I wanna kinda see if I can add a little bit more reliability when it comes to my bigger setup, which is uh, these two right here. So in case you don't know what an auto top off is, uh, aquarium water naturally evaporates, especially if you don't have like lids, the water line will go down and then you're gonna need a way to put more water into the tank. So normally people do like water changes by the time it gets really low or some people can just get jugs of water, pour it into the tank so the water line goes back up. So with the auto top off system, it's gonna be an automatic way of filling in that water and all you have to do is just replenish the, the reservoir that's attached to the system. So that's pretty much what an auto top off system is. So yeah, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and uh, start the project. So for this project, we're gonna need a couple of things and they're all actually right here. You're gonna need a bracket to hold a float valve, which is right here and then you're gonna need tubing, and then you're gonna need a container. The reason why I'm using this kind of smaller container is because I actually wanna see how many liters uh, is evaporating from my actual system before I move on to a bigger setup. So once I figure out how much like liters is kind of evaporating per week, that's when I'll determine if I actually need to go up in size or down in size. So that's what we're gonna use for now. And then last but not least, you're gonna need a bracket to hook the float valve to kind of dangle across the surface to kind of determine water line. So I'll go ahead and open this up and then uh, I'll kind of go from there and show you guys my whole plan for executing this project. So now that we have the lid removed, let's go ahead and line this bracket up real quick. And I'm actually gonna put it right here. See how it perfectly sits right there it just perfectly pinches this lip and then that goes right there naturally i might just put it over here might be a little bit better more calm there's less movement like all this stuff later on i am going to drill a hole on the lip of this and then run a zip tie through this so it, it won't come out check it out float valve mounted to the bracket the 3d printed bracket you know what i'm saying the float valve right there so now we just gotta figure out how this works i think um i have to adjust this right here so we'll go ahead and put it on the sump and we'll see how it lines up also went ahead and took some water out and put it here uh because the water line was too high so i wasn't able to adjust my float valve if it was left like that but now we have all kinds of room all kinds I think how it works is this bulkhead just connects to that. I haven't used this before. This is like a auto top off, like RO style system. So I'm not hundred percent sure what I'm, uh, I know what I'm doing, but I think it just goes like this and then you connect your line through there. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I connected it. I think this is how it goes. If you know how to connect this and if this is completely wrong, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe this will just let me know when it starts leaking but i think this is how it goes it just pushed in to the valve part and then i just locked it in with this blue little clip thing and i think this is where the other hose goes so yeah let me know if i did this completely wrong i also bought this bag of bulkheads when i say bulkhead I'm, i usually talk about like these or that kind of bulkhead but i guess for this type of plumbing it uses this stuff so let me go ahead and what i have to do is drill that container up there to fit this bulkhead and then connect the wire to this and then put it to that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I just realized that I needed to silicone this so we probably can't even finish this product today or right now. But I also messed up on this part right here. You can see the, it's like not perfectly level because of this kind of curved part at the bottom of the bin so it's another part where i messed up but i think some silicone will definitely fix this only bad part is 
we're gonna have to silicone this leave it overnight and then come back to it later so let me go ahead and take care of that right now and then we'll continue the project after it dried all right it's been two days and we are ready to go i had to silicone that part right there and then the inside right there i don't even know if it's gonna leak or not so we're gonna go ahead and try that today went ahead and also ran the line in here and then uh, i have to run this line but before we do I'm gonna make sure this thing doesn't leak first. So let's go ahead and mock it up. All right, that took a long time, but I had to hoist these two cinder blocks over my filter and over all this stuff. And yeah, it was pretty difficult. I had to use like extension cord to kind of loop it through, but we got it through. So we got everything wired up or hooked up. I have the valve sitting on the bracket, hose going straight to the reservoir. I have the bracket zip tied pretty securely to this thing. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna be, oh, this thing moves. Huh, let me see if I can, let me see if I can secure this a little bit more. This thing kind of moves. I didn't make it as secure as I wanted to. So without the mag float there, whenever the valve goes up, the whole thing moves. But now that we have the thing magnetized there, it shouldn't be a problem. The only thing we really have to test is to see if this silicone leaks. Uh, if it leaks, it's gonna suck. But at least if it does leak, it's just on the cinder block and it just goes straight to the ground. It doesn't hit like the wall or anything, so it should be okay. I can't see anything from here. Nothing is coming out of here, but the water's flowing. I think you guys can see that, right? The water's flowing out of there. If I move this up, you see that it stops. Put it down, flows. Look at that. Working float valve. Pretty sick. I'm looking at here. I don't see any leaks. So that's a good thing. Good thing about putting this on the cinder block is if it ever leaks, I'll see it really easily because the cinder blocks get stained. Or whenever it gets wet, you'll see like it gets dark. You know what I mean? So instead of guessing, I just gotta look for those, those dark spots and I'll see if it's leaking. But, check it out. Valve is going, man. Another thing I have is a cap, a lid for this thing. Uh, but I can't close it all the way because if there's a strong vacuum, the valve won't open up to let water out. So I have to kind of leave it like slightly on like this. Let that water come out. That's, that's nice. When the water fills, it'll just go like this. And then it'll stop. And then when the water evaporates, it'll open like that. So yeah, that's how auto top off works. This is actually taking a really long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and head up inside the house and then we'll come back out in like, I don't know, 10 minutes to see how far it got. So right now it's uh, 5.9 liters. Let's go ahead and come back when this is done and then we'll just top this off and then we'll revisit tomorrow. Okay, so it's been like 20 minutes and it's still at this line. So I think this is the set water line for the system now, especially how that valve is um, currently adjusted. I can adjust this further to make this bubble go up a little bit, but uh, I wanna just test it with the, this setting right now. But as of right now, this is a full system. All right, so it's the next day. Let's go ahead and check up on the reservoir. So it's currently a little bit under five liters. I think we ended off at like 5.8 or 5.7 liters. So yeah, 0.7 to go into the filter. And it finally settled in. Went ahead and filled up a jug to kind of top it off. That way we can do like a weekly test and see where we're at. I think we're gonna fill it all the way up to 7.5 liters. And then we'll come back uh, a week from today uh, or whenever we do the, the next water change and we'll see how much water evaporates from this system in one week. So now that we're done with the ATO system, I'm just kind of waiting around, chilling, watching TV and just waiting just in case something does happen or if there's like a random leak that happens after the water settles or whatever. Um, while we do that, let's go ahead and go over the cost. Now, if you're trying to do something like this for your system, it, the cost might be similar, it might be different, depending on how big of a valve you want, how big of a reservoir you want, 
uh, but a majority of the stuff, which is like the, the lines and the bulkheads, it should be the same. First, if you want a reservoir just like that one, which is food grade, which should be safe for aquariums, should be. The lid we used was $8. The container we used was on sale for $12.50. So eight plus $12.50, $20.50. So next is the line, the valve, and the on off switch, uh, which is that little part that, you know, you turn it and you can turn off the water going in and out and just in case you wanna do water changes or something. That whole kit was 13 bucks. And then the bulkhead that goes into the reservoir was seven bucks. So for about 40 bucks, uh, you can make a system like this too. Let's go ahead and see how much an auto top off system actually costs if you buy the whole kit. So an electric auto top off system, what I see right here, looking at Higer products, uh, a Higer electric auto top off system is around 75 bucks. And then you also have to purchase the, the reservoir too. If you don't wanna do a DIY version, you might wanna buy a name brand one. Uh, that might add on to the cost as well. Actually, it will it will add on to the cost. Let's actually Google it. ATO system. Some ATO reservoirs are like hundreds of dollars, which is nuts. This one's a hundred dollars. This looks like a little mini computer. Reservoirs range from fifty to one hundred dollars. Oh, here's another ATO system. Wow, this is four gallon, a four gallon ATO system from Bulk Reef Supply. It's how much is it? It's 200 bucks. It's nuts. See, here's the other ATO systems. These use um, like electric water pumps. So, yeah. It's a, it's a little different than this one here. This one's just pure gravity. There's a lot of different reservoirs. See, look at this big one for like 150. So, some ATO kits that I've seen, the cheapest ATO kits that I've seen was around 50 or 60 bucks, but it doesn't come with a, a reservoir and a lot of them that i see are plug-in options so i don't know if that's what you want um you might want something like this where it's just gravity it doesn't rely on electronics to kind of power and stuff i like this a little bit better because it's kind of foolproof it's just a tube going into a float valve when the water runs out or it gets low float valves opens and then lets the water in the system and it just kind of works all you gotta do is fill it up you don't gotta worry about plugging it in so if you guys ever wanted to do something like this it's only about 40 bucks. It's something that I've always wanted to do, especially because all of my heaters is actually in the sump. Maintaining a cool amount of water or, or good water level in the filtration system is actually really important, especially if I'm going on vacation and stuff. If I leave for about a week, two weeks, uh, I don't want evaporation to be one of the things I'm worrying about while I'm gone. Because if it evaporates too much and my heaters get exposed to air, it could burn them out, it could be really bad. While I have you here though, I'll give you guys an update on the wolf. The last time I checked in with you guys, the wolf was suffering from hole in the head. But right now, you see it, it's still suffering from hole in the head. I've been increasing my water changes in this tank like a lot. So every week I do about 80% water change, which is probably the same amount that I do for this tank. He's <laughs> sideways. But yeah, it's the same amount that I do for this tank. I water change to like here and then I fill it back up and it's good to go. But yeah, it was on a, oh, Wolf was on a hunger strike for a little bit. It wasn't eating for a while. It stopped eating shrimp and um, it kind of stopped eating pellets for a little bit, but I had to start hand feeding it and uh, that's the only way that it takes food. Right now, if I throw pellets in here, the wolf will not touch the food. It'll, it'll, it'll sit there until it gets all soggy and then I'll have to take it out. But when I throw pellets in there and I grab a stick, poke the pellet and then put it like in its face, that's the only way I'll eat. So um, if I haven't been hand feeding them or stick feeding them, probably would be starving right now. I don't know what that head shake. If you, guys, if you guys have wolves, let me know what that means. The whole head shake thing. I think that's like a territorial thing. But yeah, still active. Not hiding or anything. You guys probably didn't notice this, but um, I changed his house. It ended up getting way too big for his old house. So I ended up getting the same house or the same PVC as the gulper. So yeah, they both kind of live in the same thing. He just doesn't like to chill inside uh, while I'm here. If I'm sitting in this chair, right here, it will sit right there. But when I'm gone, it'll be in the house. So yeah, if I'm here, it likes to hang out with me. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm just chilling with the wolf, chilling with all the fish in here, just 
starting trying to think of new projects and stuff but honestly everything is just everything in here is just working been super busy with work super busy with life stuff but hoping that i can have more time in the near future start new projects start making more videos and stuff and be a little bit more active on the channel but yeah man i'm just i'm just chilling so that's pretty much it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it i just wanted to start a new project because it's been a while i haven't really been spending too much time on this channel and i wanted to start at least this project here and show you guys how i would do an auto top off system for a, a tank set up like this so again i'd like to thank you guys for watching stay tuned for the next one peace guys